All right, blessings. Good to see you all, brothers and sisters. Uh, please rise for the reading of Scripture. We'll be reading from... We'll be reading... We'll be reading from Genesis, chapter 28, verse 20. Please silence your notifications, whoever that is. And Jacob made a vow saying, This stone that I placed my that I placed as a monument should be a house for God. Amen. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father God, may we get into the habit like our forefather Jacob that every step that we take should also be a house for God. That every moment in our lives is a space for God and a place for His kingship. Father God, let us give Him the rightful place in our lives and in our communities and even in our neighborhoods and cities that He truly deserves. Let us as a people of faith keep God first in all and every area of our lives. Blessings and Shabbat Shalom. Shofar. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. All the tribes of the land will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with tremendous power and glory. He will send out his angels with a great shofar, and they will gather together his chosen people from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Halam. Asher kirishanu bimitzvota, vivas vitzivanu lishma ko shofar. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with His commandment and commanded us to hear the call of the shofar. Amen. Thanksgiving for Yeshua. Yeshua walked among us with your spirit, filled with your spirit, the only one who ever fulfilled your Torah. He healed the sick and raised the dead. The multitudes of our people saw his touch. He taught as no man taught with authority. He brought forth the treasures of the Torah, how the children saw him, the leopards he touched and made clean, how the despised and outcast found love and release from their sin, how the hypocrites feared him whose words uncovered their sin. Despised and rejected, acquainted with grief, he bore the sins of Israel. All we like sheep have gone astray, turned everyone to his own way. Our inequities were laid upon the king, the sins of the world his burden to bear. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaLam, Asher Natan Lanu, Ederek, Yeshua, B'Mashiach, Yeshua, Baruch Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation in Messiah Yeshua. Blessed be he. Please show me for the Matovu. Matovo, 
Beautiful this day is Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. <clears throat> oh, come, let us sing for joy to Adonai. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with song. For Adonai is a great God and a great king above all gods. Blessed be his name. <clears throat> and the Mika Mocha. Mi camoja pa el imadonai Mi camoja nezad pa kodesh No Like thee, 
¿Quién es como tú, mi camoja? Amén. And lejado de. Lejado de mi gratzkala, bene shabbat neka bela. Lejado de mi gratzkala, bene shabbat neka bela. Lejado de, lejado de mi gratzkala. Amen. <clears throat> Come, my beloved, to welcome the bride. The presence of Shabbat we receive. Observe and remember the Sabbath day. The only God calls us to hear in a single utterance. The Lord is one, and his name is one, for his renown and his glory and his praise. Come, my beloved, to welcome the bride. The presence of Shabbat we receive. Come, my beloved, shake off the dust, arise. Dress in garments of glory, my people. Through the son of Jesse the Bethlehemite, redemption draws near to my soul. Come, my beloved, wake up. Wake up, for your light has come. Awaken, awaken, sing a song. For the glory of the Lord is revealed to you. Come, my beloved. Amen. Amen. The Amidah, or standing prayer, is the oldest of our traditional prayers. Going back to the early Second Temple times, there are many parts of the Amidah, and some of the Shabbat portions differ from the weekday sections. <clears throat> Adonai sefatai tiftach ufia gitehilatecha. My Lord, open my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. The Avot. Blessed are you, Lord our God, God of our forefathers, God of Abraham, God of Yitzhak, and God of Yaakov, the great, mighty, and awesome God, the supreme God, who bestows beneficial kindnesses and creates everything who recalls the kindness of the patriarchs and brings a redeemer to their children's children for his name's sake with love. O King, help your Savior and shield. Blessed are you, O Lord, shield of Abraham, the Gavrot. You are eternally mighty, my Lord, the one who restores life from the grave, greatly able to save. He sustains the living with kindness, revives the dead with abundant mercy, supports the fallen, heals the sick, releases the confined, and maintains his faith to those asleep in the dust. Who is like you, O master of mighty deeds? And who is comparable to you, O king, who causes death and restores life and makes salvation sprout? And you are faithful to bring back life to the dead. Blessed are you, O Lord, who revives the dead. Kadosh Hashem, you are holy, and your name is holy. And holy ones praise you every day forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the holy God. <clears throat> and join me in Hodu. Hodu la donai ki to ki le olam pasto. Hodu la donai ki to. Oh, 
adores. Give thanks to the Lord, He is good. His mercy forever endures. Give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks to the Lord, He is good. Give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks to the Lord, He is good. Amen. Shalom, guys. Hey, Harry Princess, what's say? I said Shabbat Shalom, guys. <laughs> um, if you're not already and you're able, please um, stand and join me for Aim Kelohinu. There is none like our God, there is none like our Lord, there is none like our King, and there is none like our Deliverer. Who is like our God? Who is like our Lord? Who is like our King? And who is like our Deliverer? Let us give thanks to our God, let us give thanks to our Lord, let us give thanks to our King, and let us give thanks to our Deliverer. Blessed be our God, blessed be our Lord, blessed be our King, and blessed be our Deliverer. You are our God, you are our King, you are our Lord, and you are our Deliverer. <clears throat> um, please remain standing and join me uh, in facing east in the direction of Jerusalem as we cover our eyes in humility before Hashem and recite the Shema. <laughs> Shema And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words that I, that I command you this day shall be upon your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children, and you shall speak of them when you sit at home, when you walk along the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, they shall be frontless between your eyes, and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The entire Torah and the prophets hang on these two commandments. <laughs> Uh, please remain standing and join me for the Aleinu, which means it is our duty. Aleinu l'shabeach l'adon chakol L'atet g'la l'yotze b'reshi Shelo asanu k'goye Thank you. 
of all, to ascribe greatness to the author of creation. For he made us unlike the nations of the land, and has not placed us like the families of the earth. He has not made our portion like theirs, and our lot like all their multitudes. And we bend the knee and bow, and acknowledge our thanks before the King over kings, the Holy One, blessed be he. He stretches out heaven and establishes earth's foundation, and the seat of his glory is in the heavens above, and the presence of his power is in the most exalted heights. <coughs> he is our God, there is none other. True is our King, there is nothing beside him, as it is written in his Torah. And you shall know this day and take to heart the Lord, he is God. In the heavens above and on the earth below, <coughs> there is none other. And it is said, the Lord shall be king over all the world. On that day, the Lord will be one and his name one. I'm going to get some water real quick. <laughs> oh, loud, sorry. Uh, we'll be continuing with Adon Alam, a master of the universe, so if you know it, please join me. <coughs> Adon Alam, Hashem Malach, Beterem Kol Yitzir Nibra, Let Nasar Bechev Sokol, Asai Melech Shemo Nekra Veyachare, who reigned before any form was created. When creation came about by his will, then as king was his name proclaimed to be. And after all has ceased to be, he alone will reign in awesomeness. And he was, and he is, and shall be eternally in splendor. And he is first, and there is no second to compare to him, to be his equal, without beginning and without end. His is the power and dominion. 
And he is my God, my living redeemer, and the rock of my feet in times of trouble. And he is my banner and a refuge for me, the portion of my cup in the day I call upon him. In his hands I entrust my spirit, in the time I sleep or am awake. And with my spirit, my body, the Lord is with me. I shall not fear. Moshe rejoiced in the gift of his portion that you called him a faithful servant. A crown of splendor you placed on his head when he stood before you on Mount Sinai. He brought down two stone tablets in his hand on which is inscribed the observance of Shabbat. So it is written in your Torah. And please join me for Vesham. <laughs> Shabbat, observing it throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. From Shabbat Exodus 31, 16. <coughs> you did not give it, O Lord our God, to the nations of the land, so did you make it the inheritance, our king, of the worshippers of graven idols. For to Israel your people have you given it in love, to the seed of Yaakov whom you have chosen. The people that sanctified the seventh, they will all be satisfied and delighted from your goodness. And the seventh, you found favor in it and sanctified it. Most coveted of days, you called it a remembrance of the act of creation. Our God and the God of our fathers, may you be pleased with our rest. Sanctify us with your commandments and grant our share in your Torah. Satisfy us from your goodness and gladden us with your salvation and purify our hearts to serve you sincerely. O Lord our God, with love and favor, grant us your holy Shabbat as a heritage. And may Israel, the sanctifiers of your name, rest on it. Blessed are you, O Lord, who sanctifies the Shabbat. <coughs> Um, as we continue into the Torah service, we thank you for showing respect to the Word of God while the Torah is brought out by facing the scroll during the procession, standing for the Torah reading, and participating in the service. Ya Amod, Moshe ben Abraham la Torah. Come forward, Moshe, son of Abraham, to the Torah. There is none like you, O Lord, among the gods that are worshipped, and there are no deeds like yours. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. Source of mercy, let your goodness be a blessing to Sion, that Jerusalem be rebuilt. In you alone do we trust, O sovereign God, high and exalted, Lord of all the worlds. And it came to pass, whenever the ark went forth, Moshe would say, Rise up, Lord, and scatter your enemies. <coughs> and may those who hate you run from you. Torah will go forth out of Sion, the Lord's word from Jerusalem. Blessed is he who in his holiness gave Torah to his people Israel. <laughs> Come, Adonai, 
Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed, Blessed, Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and given us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. This week's Parsha is a double Parsha. It's going to be 
Matot and Masay from Numbers chapter 30 verse 2 to um, chapters 36 to 13. And today's reading will be um, Numbers uh, 2, 30, 2 through 3. Baidaver, Moshe, El Rashi, Ham, Hamatot, Vivne, Israel, Lamor. Sir, Hadavar. Share Siva Adonai Ish Ish Ki Yidor Neder Ladonai Ov Hish Hishava Shavu A Lesor Isar Al Al Na Show Lo Ya Lo Yahel Devarov Keho Kai Yotsi Mipiv Yase Veisha Ki Kitty Door Neder Lad Donai Vea Sera Isar Be Be Vait Ahi Ahiva Bin U Veha What was read in Hebrew it was 
just read in Hebrew was Numbers chapter 30. Whenever a man makes a vow to Adonai or swears an oath to oblig uh, obligate himself by a pledge, he is not to violate his word, but do everything coming out of his mouth. Suppose a woman in her youth vows to Adonai or obligates herself by a pledge of, in her father's house. Uh, in this double portion, we have uh, the first portion, which is Matot, which is uh, talking about tribes. And what stuck out to me more than anything is the importance of our words, which reminded me of something uh, in Genesis and how that is God breathed only of all his creatures. He breathed into us. And because of that, we are the only creatures on this planet that can speak. But with that comes a great responsibility because over and over again, God tells us to be careful with, with our words. In Proverbs chapter 15, verse 4, he says, Gentle words bring life and health, but a deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. In this portion of Matot, we see how important it is to keep your word, how, um, how Proverbs will say, a gentle word will bring life and health. A word from a friend can be uplifting, can be encouraging, can guide us to where we need to go. A word spoken from Torah can bring... Um, life-giving waters and never-ending bread for uh, for all of our days but what does what do our fruits show um what, what does our mouth show well um luke chapter 6 verse 45 says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks and james says it very much harsher in chapter 1 verse 26 Anyone who thinks he is religiously observant but does not control his tongue is deceiving himself, and his observance counts for nothing. You know, of the things that God hates, um, the most, or the thing that he warns us about the most is the tongue, a lying tongue, a false witness, and one who sows discord. All has to do with the mouth. And as we see in... Uh, as Israel is traveling across the desert, we're have, our people are having to deal with people after people fighting with each other, fighting against other nations, and we have to be set apart. And the, what God tells us is to control our mouths. It's so important. And the second portion of Maasai... Um, which is another word for journeys in, in Hebrew, um, we see a record of all the places that Israel went in their journey. And I think it is super, a super healthy practice for all of us to recognize where we came from so that we know where we're going. Um, the Bible says if, if we have a vision to write it down, to make it plain, if we have a plan, we should also, too, write it down, make it plain. Uh, we're told to make a copy of the Torah, but all that's going to do is, by writing it down, make it plain to us what we have to do, what our mission is, what our goals are, what the rules in this life are, and the rules that we have to follow if we want to be blessed, or if we don't want to follow, we have the curses that come with it. But I pray... For all my people, all my Kahila, that we learn the importance of our words as God um, reminds us through these stories. 
Amen. <laughs> And after we finish a book, we, it is a tradition among our people that we recite a phrase anytime we come to an end of uh, a book of the Torah. And that is, Chazak, Chazak, Venit Chazek, which translates to be strong, be strong, and let us be strengthened. Now, all together, Chazak, Chazak, Venit Chazek. Amen. And for the result. Oh, here. Close to our blessing. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Natan Lanu Torah Emet Bechaye Olam Nata Betu Heinu Baruch Atah Adonai Notei HaTorah Amen Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us a Torah of truth and planted eternal life in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. And now for the result. And this is the Torah that the Lord placed before the children of Israel at the command of the Lord through Moshe's hand. Devarim chapter 4 verse 44. Adonai, 
Rock of all eternities, faithful in all generations, the trustworthy God who says and does, who speaks and makes it come to pass, all of whose words are true and righteous. Faithful are you, O Lord our God, and faithful are your words, for not one word of yours is turned back unfulfilled. For you are a faithful and compassionate God and King. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, the God who is faithful in all his words. Um, today's half short reading is Jeremiah 2, 4 through 28. 3, 4, and 4, 1 through 2. Hear the, word of, hear the word of Adonai, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus, is, thus says Adonai, What fault did your fathers find in me that they strayed so far from me? They walked after worthless things, becoming worthless themselves. They did not ask, Where is Adonai who brought us up from the land of Egypt and led us through the wilderness, through a land of, desert, of deserts and rifts, through a land of drought and distress, through a land where no one travels, where no one lives? Yet I brought you into a fertile land to eat of its fruit and goodness. When you came, you defiled my land. You made my heritage an abomination. The Kohanim did not ask, Where is Adonai? The Torah experts did not know me. The shepherds rebelled against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and went after unprofitable things. Therefore I will plead with you again. It is a declaration of Adonai. I will contend with your children's children. Cross to the coast of Kittim and see. Send to Kedar and observe carefully. See if there has been anything like this. Has a nation changed its gods even though they are not gods? Yet my people have exchanged their glory for worthless things. Be appalled at this, O heavens. Be utterly, utterly horrified and dumbfounded. It is a declaration of Adonai. My people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and they dug their own cisterns, cracked cisterns that hold no water. Is Israel a servant, a slave by birth? Then why then why has he become plunder? Young lions have roared at him. They have roared loudly. They made his land a waste. His cities are in ruins and uninhabited. Even the sons of Noth and Tephans have grazed on the crown of your head. Have you not brought this on yourself when he led you in the way? But now what is on the road to Egypt, drinking the waters of the Nile, or what is on the road to Assyria, drinking the waters of the Euphrates? Your own wickedness will rebuke you, and your backslidings will chide you. Know then and see how bad and bitter it is for you to forsake Adonai your God. Nor is fear of me in you. It is a declaration of the Lord Adonai Sarah. Indeed, long ago I broke your yoke and tore off your bonds. You said, I will not serve. Instead, on every high hill and under every green tree, you sprawled out as a prostitute. Yet I had planted you as a choice vine from completely, unfa- from completely faithful seed. How then did you become to me a wandering wild vine? Even though you wash with lye and use an abundance of soap, the stain of your iniquity is before me. It's the declaration of the Lord Adonai. How can you say, I am not defiled, I have not gone after the Balim? Look at your behavior in the valley. Recognize what you have done. You are a swift young camel galloping aimlessly, a wild donkey used to the wilderness, sniffing the wind in her passion, in her heat who can restrain her. All males that pursue her will not, tie, will not tire themselves. At meeting time they will find her. Do not run while your feet are bare and your throat is thirsty, but you said there is no hope. No, for I have loved foreign gods and I will go after them. As a thief is shamed when caught, so the house of Israel is shamed. They, their kings, their princes, their kwanim, and their prophets. They say to wood, you are my father, and to a stone you birth me. They have turned their back to me and not their face. Yet when they are in trouble, they say, rise up and save us. Where are your gods that you made for yourself? Let them come, if they can save you when you are in trouble. For you have as many gods as you have cities, O Judah. And Jeremiah 3, 4. Did you not just now call to me, Avi, you are a friend of my youth? Um, 4, 1 through 2. 
If you will return, O Israel, return to me, declared Adonai. If you will put your disabled things out of my sight, detestable things out of my sight, then you will not waver. You will swear, as Adonai lives, in truth, in justice, and in righteousness. The nations will bless themselves in him, and in him they will glory. King of the universe, rock of all eternity, faithful in all generations, a trustworthy God who says and does, who speaks and makes it come to pass, all of whose words are true and righteous. Faithful are you, O Lord our God, and faithful are your words, for not one word of yours is turned back unfulfilled. For you are a faithful and compassionate God and King. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, the God who is faithful in all his words. Now there were some present at the same time who told Yeshua about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. He answered and said to them, Do you suppose these Galileans were worse sinners than the rest of the Galileans because they have suffered these things? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you all will perish the same way. For those 18 upon whom the Tower of Siloam fell and were killed, do you suppose they were worse sinners than the people living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish the same way. Then Yeshua began telling this parable. A man had a fig tree he had planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, indeed, for three years I've come searching for fruit on this fig tree and found none. Why does it use up the ground? But answering, the gardener said to him, Master, leave it alone for this year also, until I dig around it and apply fertilizer. And if it bears fruit, good. But if not, cut it down. Amen. Mm. <laughs> Adazar ha emet zechaye, Olam nata betohim, Baru atadonai, Notein habri hadasha. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the word of truth and has planted life everlasting in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the renewed covenant. Amen. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
in the attainment. are ways of pleasantness and all its paths are peace return us O Lord to you and we shall return renew our days as in the days of old may he who blessed our forefathers Abraham Yitzhak and Yaakov bless those who have come to honor God in the Torah may the Holy One send blessings upon them and upon their families, and upon the works of their hands. Amen. May our eyes behold your return to Zion in compassion. Blessed are you, O Lord, who restores his presence to Zion. Grant peace, goodness, and blessing, grace, kindness, and mercy to us and to all your people, Israel. Bless us, our Father, all of us together through the light of your presence, truly through the light of your presence, Adonai, our God. You gave us a Torah of life, love of kindness, justice, and blessing, mercy, life, and peace. May you see fit to bless your people Israel at all times, at every hour with your peace. Shabbat Shabbat, Shabbat Shuvah. Inscribe us for life. Blessing, peace, and prosperity, remembering all your people, Israel, for life and peace. Blessed are you, Adonai, source of peace. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable before you, Adonai, my rock and my redeemer. Shabbat Shalom. Good Shabbos. Adonai Khan, Adonai Tzidken, Shema Israel.
Shalom, brothers and sisters. Good Shabbos. Okay, uh, before we get into today's drash, we'll ask uh, Sister Lisa to come forward and pray for the tithes and offerings. Shabbat Shalom. Father God in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for everything that you provide for us. Um, we just um, pray that our tithes and offerings will be, that you will multiply them. And um, we just thank you for this time together. And you choose me. Amen. Amen. Those of you watching online, the uh, link will be placed in the comment section. Those of you who are here, we have a container also. Uh, you can go online as well. So this week, as Brother Moshe had uh, shared, it was a double portion this week. Matot and Masai, Tribes and Journeys. With 244 verses within this double portion... This is the longest piece read on Sabbath. One of the things that goes over the primary, one of the three topics we'll, we'll touch on today is the vows that we make and how severe they are to us. What does Yeshua say in reference to vows? If nobody gets his answer, Rabitzin knows this like verbatim. What does it say? What does Yeshua say about vows? Huh? Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Right. 
Because what, what's the issue with making a vow? You have to keep it. You can't just say it just to say it? No. Well, we're there. <laughs> we do, but uh, yeah, not supposed to. Not supposed to. Okay. It ruins your integrity. All right. So is that is integrity, is that like a pair of jeans? It ruins my pair of jeans? No, but Hashem says if you don't do it, it keeps it. Ah, Hashem says if you don't keep your word, it is considered evil. All right. So Zelophad's daughters request the expand an expansion of the Jewish inheritance laws to include them. The, did they get it? Does anybody know if they got it? Did they get equal say, yes. e equal rights as far as inheritance? All right, well, let, let's say you only have daughters and you pass on. Who gets your inheritance? According to Torah. Uh, well, according to what I read, <laughs> the daughters, but if they marry a uh, uh, Jewish man. Okay. Well, either way, your, your daughters are next in line if you had no yeah. sons, right? Huh? If you have no daughters, who's it go to? Yeah. yeah. Your next of kin and your next of kin and your next of kin. Oh, somebody from your tribe or your kahila, right? That's it's like at the very outskirts of that. So, war is waged against the Midianites and the Moabites. What is the issue with the Midianites and the Moabites? Anybody? They tried to destroy right but there's 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 a big significance here because one of these groups they know the israelis right the other one they only heard about them which is the greater evil huh which one said the because they knew about okay okay let's go further on okay and we will Answer that exact question. All right. Our ancestors are victorious. The boundaries of the land of Israel are marked out. The cities of refuge are established. And we arrive at the Jordan River ready to cross. There's a lot of stuff happening in, in this in this Parsha, right? It begins with the laws of vows following interpretation. And this, this tool for interpretation is still used until this very day. So how it works is say the first place that you find a specific Hebrew word in the scripture, right? The first place that you find the word often gives its definition or its essence or its purpose, right? And so people quite often if they don't if they're not quick to, to grab a hold of this, they'll miss it entirely. And they'll be they'll try and find something way more insightful, way more in depth, way more and really sometimes it's the surface le interpretation is fine as it is. Right? Because sometimes if we go past it, we're going straight past the, the, the meaning, right? And the definition of it. But let me go on. So, in the Torah, the Torah's word that it uses this week for vow is... What's, what's the word for vow given this week in the Torah? No? All right. So the word is neder. Y'all say that neder? neder. So this is the word that is used for the for the vow this week in Genesis. It, it's first used rather in Genesis chapter twenty-eight, verse twenty. 
And it gives a description of when our forefather Jacob wakes up from his vision of the angels and the ladders. And Jacob made a vow saying this stone. And so that word for vow they use there is neder. But one of the things I want you to focus in on is that another word that is related to neder is dira. Y'all say dira? Yeah. So dira is a place of, re of residence. So wherever you dwell, right? Kind of like the um, when when the Messianic rabbi had to drive the Orthodox rabbi somewhere, every every five miles they would stop because it was it was uh, Arab Shabbos. So every five miles that they would drive, the Orthodox rabbi would have the Messianic rabbi stop. And at, at that moment, he'd get out of the car, he'd say the blessing for the home, and then they drive on. Another five miles, stop, get out the car, say the blessing for the home, and keep going until they made it all the way to the actual synagogue. So in that, so what can you derive from those two words that, that have the purpose of vows and that they're relative to each other? You have neder, which is for vows, and you have its root word, which is dira, which is place of residence. So what can you get just out of those two words alone? Yeah, your whole household, right? Whatever you consider your household, all those who are in it, your, your sons, your daughters, your mothers, your fathers, and so on. Your vow, in part, affects all those who are in your dira, your place of, of residence. So if the commitment is a means of transforming a desire to serve God and build a relationship with Him into something permanent and real, and it creates a residence for God in your life, right? So when we honor our words, when we honor our deeds, when we honor the words of God and so forth, it creates space within our existence for the creator of the universe to dwell in our lives and through our lives. A week from Sunday is what? Who knows what a week from Sunday is? Huh? Ninth of Av. What is, there's a special word for that. What could it be? It kind of sounds like tissue. Tishbaab. Tishbaab. Very good, guys. And and gals. Everyone. So it commemorates the destruction of the first and second temple. It also is a, a major time frame when a lot of bad happened. The temple was the center of God's presence in the world. Unfortunately, the third temple is yet to fully be commenced. But solidifying our commitment to God gives us the opportunity to create a residence for God wherever we are. Just as a building projects project begins with plans and blueprints and, and miniature models of the planned structure, we too can build a model of the Holy Temple in our lives and in our communities. And after all, every temple, every assembly, every synagogue should model the spiritual significance of the temple or of the Mishkan. Amen? By concreting our commitment to God, we begin to, to honor Him in our day-to-day. -day, and we begin to see His hand over our every moment. 
The spiritual consequences for violating a vow are quite severe. We can make a verbal and written commitments and personal resolutions without having to swear a whole vow to it. And this, I know from experience, God honors far more. Well, I, I don't want to say that because it's not less than somebody who actually makes a whole out vow. But I know in, in a personal example, when, when God touched Seth's life and our son came from dead to alive. I made a promise to him. I didn't make a vow. I said I would start, right? And that's, that's highly different from saying, you know what, God, I'm going to become religious today and right now. That's an impossibility. It's not a true statement. There's no way one person can just a thousand percent like that, right? Not on his own. Not without any understanding or clarity or guidance. So I told, I, I, I swore to God that I would start, and indeed I did, and have not stopped since. And thanks be to God, He's given me an amazing partner and, and great family to fulfill that promise with and through. So state clearly that you are not making a vow, but rather you are making a commitment to make change a little bit at a time. Day by day, you're committing to change. That means every day we have to pick up and do that which is kosher, that which is right in the sight of God. When we make defined spiritual improvements, then Hashem has all the more permanent residence in our lives. Do we all understand the difference between making a promise and making a vow? Yes? Okay. 2,000 years ago, we we as a people began to drift away from the simple truths taught by Rabbi Yeshua. Or another way to say that would be taught by the Jewish Rabbi Jesus. Today, there is a prophetic resurgence of truth that is breaking out all across the globe because by this point, people have had enough of being told that they should subscribe to fear. People have had enough of being told that they should subscribe to bigotry and ignorance. Today people have had enough and they're searching for something better and more true. And the only way they'll find that something better and more true is when they begin to see God in you. When they begin to see the example of Messiah in you. The word goes on to say, And you shall not defile the land in which I dwell, because I, the Lord God, will dwell among the children of Israel. In the Sifri, it comments on that verse, and the comment goes as follows. Cherished are the Jewish people, cherished are the children of faith, even though they may be impure, the divine presence is among them, and that in, in itself purifies them. What purifies us? He does, right? He purifies us. He cleanses us. It's not by our righteousness, but by His. Cherished are the people of faith. Wherever they are exiled, the divine presence accompanies them. And when they return, the divine presence accompanies them. So, in other words, and this is scripturally true. When Jacob was dreading going down into Egypt, God tells him, Do not fear, for I am 
I am going with you. So those of us out here in the diaspora, we need not feed into fears and uncertainties and insecurities, but take refuge in the confidence that our God is with us, even here and now in the diaspora. So no matter what giants you are facing, no matter what issues you are tackling, God is in fact there with you. If you will only turn to him, you will begin to see his hand throughout your life. Recognize the need to repent. In the book, or in the Parsha Echa, it says, of what shall a living man complain? A strong man for his sins? Let us search and examine our ways and return to Hashem. Let us lift our, our hearts and our hands towards heaven as we do so. So it's not for us to point out each other's flaws, right? I said this before and I'll say this again. A person with a broken leg does not need you to tell them they have a broken leg. They are well aware, right? Anybody with any medical anything, they don't need you to tell them that they have something going on. They are keenly aware from the moment they wake up to the moment they go to sleep that they have something going on. So that being said, as we go through, let us learn to encourage each other to lift our hearts and hands towards heaven as we pray and beseech our God and King. Let us be mindful not to make empty vows, but make commitments to try every day. Keep in mind a commitment is only as good as your effort in it, right? If I committed to Rabitzin to be a good, loving, faithful husband all the days of her life, that is that that statement right there is a misnomer because I would have to make a commitment to love her, cherish her, and be faithful to her for all of my life, right? I can't use a little trickery in, for all the days of her life. Because then you're really only conspiring not good. Let's co go further on. So to the healing of the spirit. One path is to grab the weaknesses by its horns and fix up your act. This is one way to do it. And I, I can tell you as, as a kid, I don't, I don't know how many times we heard that, right? When somebody was... Oh, just, just pull up your pants and get to it, right? Pull up your boots. You'll, you'll get there. Just grab, grab that problem straight by the horns and deal with it. Another is to focus your energies on the spiritual resources that are working well. So in other words, when, when we have something and maybe it's too big for us, and we keep trying to take that head on over and over again, sometimes we need to stop putting so much energy into taking that on and put more energy into our praise and worship because we know somebody who can handle it far better than we can, right? We know our, our God and Creator can handle most things far better than we can. So we give it over to Him. So in repairing whatever is amiss in your world, when you see others are not doing their part, or important work is being mishandled, or valuable opportunities are being passed up, it is not a time for anger or despair. When we see people mishandling opportunities, when we see people passing up moments, it's not the time for us to get upset about it. Right? You might want to pray that they see the opportunity. Maybe they don't. 
If you were a good brother or sister, perhaps you would help highlight the opportunity, right? Or maybe you, in fact, would put your hands to work and help bring about that. Let's go further on. It is rather a time for you to strengthen many times over the good work that you are doing in your own sphere, right? Your sphere is all the people that you come in contact with on a day-to-day. -day. That is your sphere of influence. So as you go through it, if you see somebody that's mishandling, not where they should be, not doing as you should. No, this means that you, in your time, in your life, in your ability, increase your efforts. Because if you think about it, and we're all co-laborers in the field, and there we are, side by side, our lives, each walking and stepping towards the Messiah, towards God, towards Gani Den, as we're all walking side by side and moving towards Him, if, I, if one person is slacking in their duties, right? It's not for me to point out that they are slacking. It's for me to increase mine. That way I help pick up the slack, right? Does that make sense? Yes. For example, if, if Rabitzin, heaven forbid, wasn't feeling good, Right? And she had to take a siesta for a day, two or three. It would be up for me to pick up the slack. It would be up for the other people. Not necessarily to do her jobs, but to do our jobs and then add a little bit to it. Right? That way, the weight isn't just building. Right? Because far often when the weight builds too much, people get discouraged and they don't want to go back to faith, right? They get discouraged. Ah, ah, ah. They always have me running everywhere. I don't want to do it. Bless you. Bless you. And, and so the idea is this. Since we are all considered equal in the eyes of God, if we are all considered one in the eyes of God, then it only makes sense that you and I would invest our energy in what it is that we are called to do. Amen? In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, Therefore, putting aside all malice and all deceit, and all hypocrisy, and all envy, and all slander, understand, in this season, this season right now that you are in, God is telling you to watch your speech. He has placed a tree. He has placed the tree there, the nation, and he desires that you be part of his nation. He desires that you be part of his partnership in creation. He desires to have a relationship with you that's beyond the surface level. He desires that you be part of his nation. And he desires to be part of your journey as well as having us to be part of his journey so your choices your words will either lead you back into step with him or they'll lead you further and further away from him right because as Ephesians 4 says it is our own divisive thinking that leads us astray and keeps us separated from the blessing. As a, as an, a, a pretty well a pretty well rabbi once said, it is all the 
the issues, right? That keep us separated from L. Do everything without complaining or arguing. Wow. Um, I'm gonna say this one, so if anybody feels convicted, um, Roberto will be here for prayer afterwards, okay? Do everything without complaining. I could just, I'm gonna go home right there. I'll see y'all tomorrow, okay? Blessings and shalom. That should be good. Yeah, I'll, I'll just leave it there. Do everything without complaining. Y'all have a good night. Uh, do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure. What's your benefit out of that? You become blameless. That should be enough, right? That you could become blameless and pure children of God. There's the bonus. Without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you should shine like the stars in the universe as you hold to the word of life. Amen. What keeps us shining like stars? Holding to his word. Right? Watching our words, our commitments. It's kind of like the difference between, in, in scripture, between justified killing and murder. What's the difference? What's the difference? What's the difference between murder and what's considered a righteous kill? What's the difference? Yeah, but what's the difference? Okay. Huh? The intention. That's it, right? But intention without evidence or proof is still not good, right? We have to have verified before we just go and, and write something or someone off. We have to have something tangible, right? And then on the other end of it, you, you now have to give them mercy, right? Because Yeshua said, whatever you pour out will be poured. So we have to be aware of that. But let me go ahead and finish this, and I'll do it with a quote from a, um, from a Catholic priest. So here we go. So, uh, Father Ed said it this way, There is no such thing as innocent gossip. When we speak ill of others, we are becoming homicidal believers. That's a beautiful quote. I, I love every word of it. When we speak ill of anyone, we are killing them. We are killing the faith, we are killing who they could potentially be, and we are killing any possibility of them ascending beyond what you have defined them to be. Because they do not have... I'm sorry, I went too far. Those who live judging others, those who live judging others, those who live speaking ill of others, those who live a hypocritical lifestyle because they do not have the strength or the courage to look at their own fault. The Lord does not speak much of this, but later on he says, those who have hate in their hearts are murderers. This is the Lord saying it, not me. Who is considered a, mur a murderer? Those who have hate or malice in their heart. So we ask for us and for the whole of the kingdom of God, for all the communities out there, that there be a great conversion from the crime of gossip to the ways 
of love, humility, and gentleness. Lord, may a great conversion start here and now, that we begin to be ushers of your presence, helpers in your kingdom, sons and daughters of your inheritance. Bless the people who are watching this, and blessing the, bless those who will hear this later. With that being said, good Shabbos and Shabbat Shalom. Good Shabbos. Is that what you call it? Always look for something. The sound of silence would be better. <laughs> Easy there, Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> the song or the understanding? The bow. So keep in mind again, uh, a week from tomorrow, we will be at Tisha B'Av, and we will gather together uh, for a small mournful service, and um, so I hope to see those of you there. Uh, that being said, you ready, darling? Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the fruit of the trees. Haaretz. Amen. I, I haven't ever had hot apple juice before. So. It's good for you, both characters. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the bread from the earth. Amen. And now, those of you at home, if you'll gather your children.
Ephraim, Manasseh. May God make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. May God make you like Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord protect and defend you. May He always shield you from shame. May you come to be in Israel a shining name. May you be like Ruth and like Esther. May you be as if a man Manasseh. Strengthen them, O Lord, and keep them from the stranger's way. May God bless you and grant you long life. May the Lord fulfill our Sabbath prayer for you. May God make you good husbands and wives. May He in His mercy love and care for you. May the Lord protect and defend you. May the Lord protect and defend you. And these are the words that Yeshua spoke over the Talmudim as he ascended into heaven. These are also the words that Moses instructed his brother Aaron to pronounce over the sons and daughters of Israel. shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Good Shabbos. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> so, uh, really quick announcements, announcements, announcements. We have any announcements? Ladies, ladies, do we have any announcements? Really quick, announcements. Lulav sets. Get your Lulav sets. Sukkot is right around the corner. It begins in October. So after Shabbos is over, send in your order for the Lulav set or, or whatever it is that you're, you're purchasing for the High Holy Days that are all literally around the corner. You can make payments up to the 11th. We, we do have a um, Tisha B'Av, like I said, the morning for all the atrocities. And those of you who are just coming in from the uh, other branches of faith, if you're just coming into the Messianic understanding, uh, the reasons why you would mourn on this Tisha B'Av is all, any or all divisions that you may have had a hand in within the Kingdom of God itself. Anytime you've caused division between your brothers and sisters of faith, this also is what you should mourn for. Because this tells us that you are also liable for some of the spits the insults and the hittings that Messiah Yeshua received. So mourn for those things. It will help you not to repeat them in the future years and days. That being said, good Shabbos, Shabbat Shalom.